Continuing in our training for simulated process color separations and simple steps raster. In this session, I'd like to get into image analysis for color separation. In our last session, we talked about color components and how the colors work and being aware of that. And then we're gonna to need to kind of touch on that here briefly before we get into the actual analysis. We know that with simple steps raster, we're working with a scientific method of color separation based on the visible spectrum of light or color and we covered that. We know that we're working with 360 degrees of hue, and we basically divided that into components of color based on working with three, six, or 12 color components. As we can see here, three hues, six hues, 12 hues. Now I like to refer to these as color components because it's easy to understand that. And whenever we look at an image, we're gonna be looking at the color components that are in the image. And then how do you wanna separate that image for the best possible screen printing result or color separations based on any constraints we may have relating to the number of colors on our press or any constraints we have relating to the number of colors that we can print for based on a client's budget. One of the things we want to be aware of when we're working with our color analysis and color separations is that with Simple Steps Raster, we have you know your 3, 6, and 12 in the hues. Now this is giving you the full color spectrum with three colors. Six hues is using six colors and 12 hues is using 12 hue or color components. There's some things you wanna be aware of with that because if you pull a cyan from the three hues, and I'm gonna go ahead and pull this apart here, you're gonna get much more color because you're using three colors blending ingredients to reproduce what is available in the color spectrum or in the visible light spectrum. So it's gonna give you a much broader pull of the cyan or where the cyan is making many different colors as opposed to say a six color. And if I take this apart, you can see that my cyan is a significantly, I guess you could say reduced gradient or pull of the cyan color because I've pulled the green. So I'm not making the green from the cyan, the yellow. I'm printing the green. And you can see up here in the cyan that we have the green here, but that is part, excuse me, in the three colors, the green is part of the blend of the cyan and the yellow. Now in screen printing, we want to be able to print the green if we can, because we're going to get the best result, as I said. Now down here in the 12, we divided the color spectrum or the pure color or hue components into 12 colors. So we're pulling a much tighter swatch or gradient of the color, as you can see there. And you wanna be aware of that when you're doing your color analysis or when you're gonna do your color separation because if you pull cyan from here and you pull green from the six hues and there's some of that green being made from the cyan, your separations aren't gonna come out correctly. So if you're gonna pull the green here and you've got cyan, then you obviously wanna pull it here from the six hues and et cetera with the 12 hues. Now I'm making an analysis of an image and I'm back here to the simple crayons that we were working with previously. As we covered the fact relating to the blue and the black here, if we print this as a cyan, we're going to CMYK, excuse me, not cyan. We're going to be working with yellow, magenta, cyan, and black, four colors to get that as a CMYK print. But if we work with just the blue and the black, we're gonna get much more vibrance. We're gonna have a little bit more ease on press because we're not trying to replicate this blue through the CMY and K, but just through blue and black. So understanding that and understanding how the three, six and the 12 pull, we've got our crayons here and we can see here's the crayon set up as CMYK. And if I take these apart, once again, we can see that we're using quite a bit of blending here, but we can print this with four colors. Now, if you were printing on a white shirt and you had a four color press, obviously this is the strategy you'd have to take. Here we've got the six color components or the six hues of the same crayons. And you can see here's the black, there's our blue, that's our yellow, there's our red, there's our magenta and there's our green. So here we've got a number of different colors. 
to be able to reproduce that working through the 6Us. However, over here under the 12, we've got this as 5. We've got the blue, the green, the orange, and the violet. So what you want to be able to do is make an analysis of what color components or colors are in your image and how you want to separate that. And the way I typically do that is I'll select the image or graphic and I'll go over here to the click steps tab and I'll just click on hue range and I'll select standard. And what that will do is that'll pull the black off the image for me so I can analyze the color that's in the image. And here I can see my colors. Now looking at this, I'll go ahead and copy this. And I'll go back to my original document here. Go ahead and paste this in. And one of the things I can do is, you know, I'm at the point now where I can look at these and tell. But if you want to be able to measure them in the computer, you can use the color docker in Corel Draw. And you can get to that through window, dockers, and color and enable that. Now that has an eyedropper tool. And I can select this eyedropper tool and I can come over here and I can click on, let's say, this RGB here. Now it's very hard to identify these colors as RGB, but I'll go ahead and click on that. And you can see that's an RGB. Now I can look in here and see here's the color, almost like what we see over here in our visible spectrum of light or color. But I can change this from RGB to HSB once I've selected the color. It'll tell me that's a hue 240. Well, I can look over here at my color components and see that 240 is blue. Now, depending on how I want to separate this image, I could do the same thing here, but I know that this is blue, green, orange, and violet. Now, to separate this with Simple Steps Raster, all I would do is go to my Auto Steps tab, I'm going to go with the 12 hues, so I'm going to want blue, orange, green, and violet. Now if I separate these from the 6 hues, I would pick up some of the colors, perhaps some of the blue blending in here to the violet. Because they're going from blue to magenta, and if we look over here in the spectrum, we can see going from blue to magenta, we're going to get violet in that pull if I use the 6 hues. So I don't want to use the 6 hues, I want to use the 12 hues. Go ahead and zoom back out here with this selected. The next thing I want to pull is my black. Right there. Now I've got those selected. All you need to do is just click on these little green lights, turn them on and off, and simple steps remember what you've selected for your color separations, and then auto process it for you. So with all that selected, I'll just go ahead and click on click steps, and I'll let that process. Once that's finished processing, I'll go ahead and minimize Simple Steps raster here, and I'll go in and take a look. Now I'll go ahead and copy this, and we'll go back to where we started here. I'll go ahead and delete this, go ahead and paste this in, it'll go right into the same place. And you can see there is our color separation. Now, one of the things you want to be aware of when you're dealing with your color separations, the best mode to view these is, is to go to your transparency and change these two subtract. Now if you're in Corel Draw X6 or X5, you can do that through the transparency tool which you'll find here and you'll have some different tools here and you can slide that back to zero. But now I can see my color separation based on the different components of color plus my black. There's my black, there's my violet. Now you can see it did pick up a little bit of color in there but you could remove that or edit or adjust that. There's my blue, there's my green, and there's my orange. So we can do the same thing with our other images. For example, here, this image, I can see that I've got orange, red, and yellow, actually. And if I look at this image in comparison to, let's say, our color components. We can measure these and look at what we have in the image very effectively. And I can see I've got a lot of
color that's going on between here and the red and the yellow. And there might even be some magenta sometimes you'll find in these images because the red is very close to the magenta. But here again, I can go and I can click in here and take a look at something like, I'll just click right here, that'll give me the RGB, change this to HSB, and I can see that I've got a 20. And 20 would be here between 0 and 30. It would be like right in there. So that would be kind of a reddish orange. So this image I could separate, say, as just yellow and red and create the orange through the blend. You can see the blend of the yellow to the red will make my orange. Or I could separate it down here as a 12 color going with, say, red, orange, and yellow, as you can see there. Now it gets interesting because when you're dealing with these images very often you can print something like this basketball player and let's go ahead and take a look at the standard hue on that. I'll just go to the click step tab here and then click on standard hue and process him. And we'll go ahead and zoom out and minimize this. And I can look here, we'll go ahead and copy this and we'll go back to our color components here and paste this in. Now you can look at this image and you can look at the color components. You can see there's red and there's some cyan and blue in here that's behind the black. But really you could get away with just printing the black or grays here for the color components and just having a red. So I could take this player and separate him as just one color component, that being red and then black. Go here to my auto steps tab and we'll take a look at that. Here I'd want to use my red from the six hues because I'm going to get as much of that as I can. I'm going to go to click steps and I'll select black. Then I'll go ahead and click on click steps and let that process. Once that's finished I'll go ahead and minimize my simple steps raster. Zoom in here and take a look. This is just two colors. So we'll go ahead and copy this. Go back here to our original. I'm not going to need this. I'll delete this. I'll go ahead and paste this in. And there you can see that. Now I'm going to change this to a subtract just so that everything blends correctly. But you can see just two colors here. Red and black. One color component and the color black. Now you can see that you're missing some of the blue that would be in the actual shorts here. But really that probably just came from the digital camera. There's Obviously, that's a white shorts, as you can see there. And we'll ungroup this, and we can see here we have red behind black. So you could print many times graphics that have photographic looks to them. Very high-end looking, working with a very limited number of colors. And I know in the industry, very often we think about simulated process in many different colors. Now, if you're printing this on a colored garment, of course, you need a white base and perhaps a white highlight. And we can take a look at, let's say, these basketball players here. And I'll go back to my click steps here. And we'll go to the click steps tab. And we'll just do a standard on this. And we'll take a look at our color components or the channels that we would have in the image. I'll take just a minute to process. Now, once that's finished, I'll go ahead and close my simple steps for action we can take a look here and we can see some orange that would be going into the flesh we can see some red in the basketball and we can see blue and cyan in this design or in this graphic and once again we could take this paste this back in and start to do some analysis with the color eyedropper Come over here and click, say, right around in here. RGB, change that to a CMYK. Not CMYK, excuse me, HSB. 211. Oh, that's right here in my Azure, 212, 210, which is under my 12 hues. Right there. Or I could pull it from the blue to the cyan that's in here and get that color coming out through the blend of the blue and the cyan, which you can see over here in the six hues. That would be the blend between, excuse me, yeah, blue and the cyan right here. 
So we really want to be able to do these analysis. They're easy to do working with simple steps raster and looking at the number of colors in an image. Here with this bike, I could run that through and take a look at its hue. And I'll click on standard here and we'll process that. Go ahead and minimize my simple steps raster. I'll zoom out and take a look. And here we can see cyan and red. Go ahead and copy this. Paste this back in. Take a look at this one here against our visible spectrum of light or color. And we can see a lot of color in here between the cyan and the blue and of course the red. So we could use those color components under the auto steps tab, red, cyan, blue, and black to do the separation. Now, when we get into things that have, or images that have a lot of color, like the coral here, then we start working with, you know, if we've got a four color press or a six color press, we might want to look at doing process printing because there's just a lot of color here. We'll take a look at this also. And I'll just pull the standard on this. And we'll let that process. Go ahead and minimize simple steps and raster. We'll go ahead and zoom out and grab this. And I'll actually put that back. I'll just hit copy. I'll go back to our other document here. I'll paste that in. And we can see looking at this image against our 360 degrees of color. We've got a lot in here. I mean, there's oranges, yellows, reds, cyans, magentas, blues. In which case, we're probably going to want to look at something like doing a six hues or a three hues because of the amount of color we're going to have to reproduce. Unless we've got a press that's got, say, a 16 color automatic, in which case you could do this as the 12 colors. So I can think you can see how we want to be able to analyze Im images, analyze the color components that we're going to need, how we want to separate those based on the three, six, or 12 hue options available with simple steps raster for assimilated process printing, and taking a strategic approach to working with color very easily based on our understanding relating on relating to what we've gone over in this session. We'll go ahead and wrap here and we'll continue in our next session working with simulated process and simple steps raster.